Hi everyone, I'm Tarani Sood and you're watching the first episode of The Making Of. Here we take you through the extraordinary stories of some of the most prominent names in the Indian culinary industry. Today we have with us a very special guest. His journey comes as an inspiration to all the young home chefs out there. From starting out as a young chef in the kitchens of a five-star hotel in Shimla to now being the food and beverage operator at the Western Hotel in Mumbai, he's come a long way. We have with us today Chef Ajay Chopra. Hi Chef, thank you so much for joining us today. So Chef, tell us, what were your growing up years like? Well, uh, I, I grew up in a small town of uh, Sonipat, uh, Alwar and then we moved to Faridabad. So, uh, growing up years were, you know, just like a normal boy. Uh, I wanted to become a doctor. That's what my parents really wanted me to uh, be. Uh, and that's what I was studying for. But, uh, you know, God in his ways had, had planned something else for me. And um, I cannot say that I started cooking very early, but I can definitely say that the love for cooking began really early. Uh, it was the age of around nine that I started uh, in the kitchen, helping my mom, you know, probably making tea for her, doing some small chores for her uh, and started to like what I was doing. And I think that is where the beginning happened. So the early years were like this. And um, uh, I mean, then moving on, you know, uh, Going to the hotel management college, I think I was affirmed that, you know, kitchen is my love and this is where I want to be. And uh, I think that from there on the journey began. Okay. Were there any chefs that you, that were your inspiration that you looked up to? Honestly speaking, I passed out my 12th in 1994. And that time there used to be one television program uh, on food, which was, uh, you know, Khana Khazana. And there was chef Sanjeev Kapoor who would come every afternoon and tell us, uh, you know, how to make this and how to make that. So for me... Honestly speaking, I did not really know the meaning of a chef unless I, I, until I saw uh, Chef Sanjeev Kapoor. And I think uh, uh, for me, he became quite a motivation because, you know, it was not just that you could cook uh, in a kitchen, but you could also, uh, you know, cook on television and be there and be here. And then there was another guy called Yan Can Cook. It was an old series. And that guy was, you know, a super chopper. I used to call him a super chopper. You know, you he would take the knife and just crush the garlic and it, you know, he would like go on a supersonic speed. And I think I loved him. So these two chefs really inspired me to kind of at least pick up this profession. And then there were multiple as I grew. There were mentors. There were people who uh, really helped me to be who I am today. So when would you say you first decided to open up your own restaurant? Can you take us through how that happened? So, uh, believe it or not, but it's been almost 20 years uh, that I actually spent in hotel kitchens, restaurant kitchens, working for someone. And um, it, was, it was a great experience because all this while, you know, you could do things that, uh, you know, uh, you're doing things for people, doing things in a hotel, you're doing, doing things, traveling around. And there's lots that you pick up, you learn. Uh, but when um, it actually came to a point that I would open our own thing you know the first business food business that we stepped into was called as burgundy box it was a food delivery portal which had a diy box in it and um, that that really was my first um, uh, kind of you know food business and for me it was quite challenging because as a chef you know you've run hotels you've held pnls worth 40 50 60 crores uh, but when it comes to your own business, you know, it suddenly starts to feel very different because everything is your responsibility. Every single penny going, coming is your responsibility. I think that really made a huge difference in my life. And from there on, uh, you know, opening more, I think uh, uh, the learning has only increased. Okay, so following up on that, how did you decide on the menu and you experiment with flavors? How does that happen? So... I would, I would not say that, you know, this is what I did for my restaurant, but I think uh, for every restaurant that I've opened in any hotel or any new menu that I've created or any new uh, kind of uh, thought process that has come in in terms of food. For me, creating a new dish would mean knowing your flavor really well, knowing your cooking techniques really well. And it's actually similar to knowing your notes very well, to knowing your music very well, to know your, you know, uh, symphonies very well. So... Cooking is just like that. So whenever you're, you're creating a new menu, you have to see where you are, who you're creating it for, uh, what are your uh, clientele, what is it that your clientele needs? And at the same point of time, what are you working with? So what is the local produce? Then comes in your whole idea of what is 
uh, you know, the, the flavors that you're going to induce. Is it summer? Is it winter? Is it, you know, uh, autumn? You know, that is how you will kind of uh, relate to the menu that you're creating. Okay. What would you say has been your biggest obstacle so far? For any, pe- for any person, I think the biggest obstacle is your, your own self because your own self is what you're actually battling against. If you can't get up in the morning, you're battling against your own self. If you can't do a thing, then you are saying, oh, I can't do this. And then who are you battling against? You're battling against your own self. And the more you battle with your own self, the more you win with your own self, the more boundaries that you actually achieve and reach. And that is where it actually means to push your boundary because at one point of time, your body, your mind, everything is telling you, I'm done. I can't do anything ahead of this. But then a new day comes and you say, let's do it again. And that is what I think I would, I would say that was my biggest obstacle. Taking it from there, how would you describe your cooking style? Like, how did you learn? And can you tell us how you developed your style? Like I said that, you know, whilst I was uh, battling with my own obstacles, one thing I told myself that I'm not going to stick to only a cuisine, which means that, oh, I will only learn Indian or I will only learn Western or I will only learn bakery. That was one thing that was very clear with me because, you know, uh, a mentor chef, uh, his name is Dalton Hurtis. He right now is a general manager in uh, Marriott in Sri Lanka. Uh, he was a chef before and he said that when you say a chef abroad, there is nothing called as a pastry chef, an Indian chef, a bakery chef. He's a chef and a chef means that he can cook anything and everything. So I quite got inspired by that thought process and I started to learn whatever came my way. And I think the biggest thing was that now when I can enter into a Chinese kitchen, maybe I don't know how to make every single dish what they have on their menu, but I definitely know how are they steaming this? How are they roasting it? What is the sauce going? What is the condiment going? And I think that is what helped me to kind of, again, broaden my horizon as a chef. So if you ask me the question, I think to be precise, uh, you know, what inspires me uh, in, in today's life or what is my cooking style? I want to stick to the understanding of where I am. It is a very important factor. So if I'm opening a restaurant in Calcutta, I need to know I need to use local ingredients because I'm going to be 60% feeding local people. So I need to use the Nolengur. I need to use the Kasundi. I need to use, you know, the ingredients that are available and liked in Kolkata. My food philosophy in Calcutta was regional, local, flavorful, and seasonal. You know, if I'm working with these four boundaries, I will get what I want. So my menu actually changed uh, after summer, after autumn, after winter and for the monsoon. So I had four different menus in that restaurant. Okay, now the next question that I want to ask you is, so like you said that, are, that the chefs today have a lot of resources available to them. What would you say that you wish you had back when you were just about learning and starting out? So um, we, were, we were working with a challenge of knowledge being uh, easily accessible, but at the same point of time, we were also working with lesser knowledge across. Uh, today, I mean, if I go to a hotel management college, um, they are teaching them what is a sous vide, they are teaching them what is a bubble philosophy, they are teaching them how to use maltodextrin, or they are teaching them how to possibly, uh, you know, do a pecking duck when you're in the third year. But when we were studying, uh, our course structure was also very limited. So we were uh, working with very less resources. Um, we were working with basic resources. And our learning pattern was was only dependent on us. So if if we want to learn more, we have to go dig more. And mm. if we, the more we dug, the more we found. Okay, so Chef, now you were saying that the resources were very less. Now, now there are resources available to you all around. How would you say social media has helped you reach out to your audiences? And which is the social media platform that you use the most? Uh, for me, Instagram, um, Facebook, YouTube, I use all the portals. I'm not so high on Twitter uh, because I believe Twitter is only now a portal where people rant and I don't rant so much. Um, uh, But at the same point of time, uh, you know, Instagram being the highest because I think it it gives food its its due worth. Uh, If you post a picture of a good looking dish on Instagram or if you post a technique, I think people respond to that uh, uh, in, in a much larger and a greater way all the good chefs definitely are, are building their Instagram profile uh, in, a, in a very consolidated manner. 
but youtube is definitely another portal which kind of helps you to showcase your entire recipe and you know be there out there and show your content of who you are so for me social media is definitely definitely very important um as it kind of helps me to reach out to places which i could never reach out to otherwise i mean if i look at my insights i have viewers from bangladesh pakistan i have viewers from uk us the same amount of time i have you from canada and from africa you know so it's a diverse uh, uh, set of people that i am reaching to and and probably showing them my version of the aloo paratha okay now in terms of professional experience do you think that it's a must do you think that chefs need professional experience or training uh, before they go on to actually doing what they do as a career if i if i you know look at it right from today um, what has happened to our country is that post master chef india uh, really entered india um, you know cooking was was an art form at homes cooking was something that people would enjoy at homes and not really talk about it so much it didn't really become a passion for thousands and thousands of people but post master chef um, what we've seen is that people are looking at food in a very different way yeah my learning from master chef has been that i used to always think of the question that you've just posted that you know it's important for a chef to be professionally trained yes it's important i am not taking away from the fact that whatever professional degrees that we have taken is is all garbage no it's not but when i entered master chef i i realized that there is so much more talent sitting at homes at people's hearts where only if they were given a little push they could go much further so people have been learning at home with youtube people have been using their cooking skills to create magic in their families and i know that a lot of people actually have started out now with this lockdown have started out to do a food business you know mm-hmm. and and that is so exciting because now it is not just limited to a professional chef who is in a restaurant or a hotel uh, doing this job but it's actually now every home you could you could do what you want food and cooking is like that so the more you learn the more you grow the more you can do and our professional set of trainings only gives you the wings to fly post that it's all totally up to you of how far wide and high you can fly so chef you'd be aware that maggie has come up with this campaign called apna food business where they're giving entrepreneurs young chefs a chance to start their own food delivery business or start their own food channel how do you think this is going to help and do you think it's a good idea i think that's a fantastic uh, idea i think it's just awesome how uh, you know maggie has come up with this amazing thought process because what really happened during this lockdown was that so many ladies you know who were exceptional cooks who were very good cooks obviously had the whole family on a daily basis in their houses and it initially started by just kind of you know giving them great dishes every day but i think it yeah. became to a point where their husbands or partners kind of you know excited them motivated them that yes you can do it you know you can probably open a small food business and and, and i think maggie has realized that the only hurdle that these women will have is the technical know how so the technical know how will be provided and i think these guys will fly so i think it's amazing and i'm really excited to be a part of it myself no that's that's great and uh, going on from there like you said the whole world is open to everyone today how would you say the indian food landscape is is changing how do you see it evolving or developing or changing today well it's a very interesting question because 2007 i i was working in the uk and uh, was there till 2009 and what i saw was that internationally um indian food used to have a third uh, uh, you know a, a number 3 position uh, when i say this the number 1 position was obviously the local and the regional food the number 2 position was chinese food everybody would do a chinese takeaway everybody would go to a chinese cart and and pick up something and this is across the world it is not just us uk it's across the world because that cuisine just kind of you know spread like wildfire but in 2007 i saw this shift happening where the indian takeaways started to take a lot more position i mean i recently hear, heard the news of uh, saranch opening his goila butter chicken in london you know that's amazing because now 
and there are no boundaries you know we are we are really talking that indian food is being liked and and savored by the whole wide world and we can very proudly say that we could now stand at a number 2 position where uh, you know the regional and the local cuisine obviously takes number 1 but indian food mm. has become a strong part of every country you know the indian curry however you want to describe it is loved so like you said this whole lockdown period has been different for everyone uh now there's a lot of food trends that have come up during this time what do you think of them if i say that we were talking about the grains and eating healthy and eating right from the last two or three years you know that that whole wave had started to flow but now it's like you know it's like an explosion so now everybody is realizing that keeping my immunity on a high is the only way i can possibly save myself from this from the, from this pandemic so what do you do to increase your immunity there are multiple things you know uh, so cuisine styles now are are focusing towards high immunity food uh, are focusing towards you know uh, lesser dangerous foods people are now realizing that i can't be eating out so often or i can't be doing you know things in a lax manner so i think the food trends uh, uh, if we talk about a few what has happened now one is uh, you know food which is good for your health food for food which is good for your body people now thinking and really actually acting on it that it's not just about today uh, so it's also about tomorrow so which means sustainability which means that we can't just go on eating one kind of food which i like now i need to diversify my oils i need to diversify my food uh, so that's going to pick up now in a big way uh, the third thing what we see is uh you know healthy and fresh uh, has a new meaning now uh we have been using this word uh, a lot uh you know just kind of very casually but healthy and fresh would really mean that you know cook so much and eat so much you know you don't cook for long and you don't keep it for long i think those things are helping your body to stay fit uh and 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 stay uh, with a high immunity i want to ask you if there's one piece of advice that you could give young chefs today what would it be it starts here you have to tell yourself that it's not about the glory and it's not about the glam that i'm going for it's about the learning and the passion that i will pursue if i pursue the right path i will land up at the right destination there is no second question a lot of people do not land at the right destination is because they don't pursue the right path if they are pursuing only glory and glam they will have a finish line which is very very soon but if you are pursuing food and cooking as a passion that you want to live with know that it is going to be a hard journey know that it's going to be tough is going to be demanding but at the same part of time very very rewarding so it opens a whole world uh, of opportunities for you by the same part of time you have to go through the hard path there is no cutting corners from there um chef we've got five quick questions to ask you okay so i'm just going to go The first question: What's your signature dish? Hello, Tikka Bab. Um, what's the one ingredient that you think makes everything better? Fresh green coriander. A food trend you really dislike? Uh, fusion cuisine. Your favorite food? My favorite food, uh, Chinese food. How did you react the first time you had a negative review? Oh, uh, sloppy. Uh, I was quite depressed. And the last question for today: What would you say has been your most successful catering project? It's a very tough question because every project that I work for, I want to make it successful. Uh, but one of the most successful has been Pash in Pune. And with that answer, we come to the end of our first episode. Thank you so much for your time today, Chef. Your answers have been most valuable. And to our viewers, we'll be back again next week with another episode.